Good morning, Modern Stutters. This morning we thought we'd go over all the accomplishments we made this year, the failures that we had this year, and talk about what we plan on doing and are looking forward to for 2018. Right? So the, our, the biggest things we worked on this year that we had really good luck with and we focused a lot of our energy on was infrastructure for the homestead. What do you say? So we have the outdoor kitchen that we built and that'll help save us a lot of time and energy this coming season. We'll be able to can all of our food out there, we'll be able to clean all the produce, and first we'll be able to use it as a greenhouse too. So when we have all of our transplants going, it's southern south facing so we can put the transplants out in there when it gets early spring but we still get hard frost at night, the outdoor kitchen will keep them from getting the frost. Be able to wash all the produce we get, we can can it, we can clean it, we can store it in there for a little while and keep that mess out of the house, which will make you happy. Very happy. Right. If the weather's miserable, if it's raining out, we still have a place to do it. If it's really hot, it seems like whenever you're ready to like can your big abundance, whether it's beets or pickles, it's like August and it's like 100 degrees and humid. And you don't want to have your kitchen going and your up your stove and all that stuff going with all that extra heat in your house. Yeah. So that'll be nice to have that outside. If you guys haven't seen our outdoor kitchen, I'll put a link to that series right here. And then we have the root cellar we just built. So now when we get a big abundance of food, we'll have a place to store it. Our big issue was at this house is we heat our house with wood. And we have the wood burning stove in the basement and it heats with natural convection the whole house, but that means our basement's the warmest, which I would say an average of between 70 and 80 degrees, depending on the time of the year and the outside temp. So if we store potatoes down there or any other kind of root vegetables, they go bad pretty fast. But also the rest of the house is warm too, so you don't really have a different place. Right, we don't have any place to store everything because the house is so warm, like right now, it's 5 out right now, it was 17 below zero this morning, and up here 67. So that means even in the pantry, if we store onions and stuff like that, they go bad pretty quick because the whole house is warm. Which, we like it that way, we're not complaining. It's just not a good thing for your vegetables. So we built the root cellar for that, and we can hang and cure all of our air cured meats down there. I'll put a link right here to our root cellar playlist. And then the first project we built this year was New York City, which is our mobile chicken coop, which has been great because it's a lot easier to move our chickens around on pasture. We can set up our electric poultry netting, have the chickens in one area. When they've eaten all the grass or whatever we want them to eat in that area, we can pack up the poultry netting, hook New York City onto the Kubota and move it around our modern homestead. So that was the first project, we spent a lot of time there. After we got that built, we focused a lot of our energy on building raised garden beds. Yeah. That was the next project. We had good luck with the garden. We brought some soil in, we did a little bit of compost. We didn't get to focus as much on composting as we wanted to this year. So I would say that was probably one of our biggest failures, was compost. But we didn't fail on it because we we're being lazy or we didn't want to do it. We just had other priorities we needed to get to first. And then it was actually probably a good year to not focus on gardening for us because we had a really wet and rainy, yeah, rain. a lot of rain here. So the gardens we had did okay, but I, they didn't do that great. And I think a lot of it, thinking back now, I'm like, oh, we had a terrible year of gardening. That was kind of our fault. I think a lot of it was weather. Yeah. So this coming year, 2018, one of the big things we'll be focusing on is composting. We have our we have our winter chicken coop that the chickens are in with the deep bedding method going. Early spring right away, I have to get in there with the Kubota and take out all that hay and chicken manure, get it out in the weather where we can compost it, add water to it, turn it all the time, and just turn it into beautiful compost quickly that we can put on the gardens. And then we're just gonna be composting throughout the season this year because we really need to work on some good compost for our gardens. We don't have good soil here. We have very rocky, gravelly soil. So it's not 
a great spot to have like a big garden. So we gotta make all of our own compost before we can have gardens. So that's gonna be our big focus this year. That, like a new focus, like a project is the garden. We're gonna be doing the chickens and the pigs, but we already have a lot of that infrastructure set up. We'll be working with the outdoor kitchen, we just don't gotta build it, which we spent a lot of time and energy. Mm -hmm. Most of our time and energy last year was focused on the outdoor kitchen. We wanted to get it done. We had to get it done before the uh, three-day hog harvesting class that we had, and that went awesome. This April, we're gonna have a hog to table three-day class. We're gonna have the pigs half out on the tables, and we're gonna say, now that we have all this beautiful meat, what can we make with it? What are the cuts? How do we cut it up? But then we're gonna be learning how to make beautiful food with it. We're gonna be making sausage, terrinis. I wanna be doing hot dogs. Bacon, there's gonna be so much we're gonna be learning that we have this beautiful meat in front of us Now how can we get all the wonderful food that we grew to love But have it and know what's in the meat and know what's in the sausage and have good quality That we have control over so that's gonna be April we get to use the outdoor kitchen again That'll be the first time we get to use it in 2018 for anything big and then throughout the whole growing season We'll be using that quite a bit just canning all of our produce cleaning it getting it ready to eat it's gonna be good. Yeah, so we're still gonna have our egg layers. We're gonna be raising our meat birds. We're gonna figure out what breed we're raising for meat birds this year. I'm not gonna say we're not doing any Cornish crosses, but if we do, the most we would do for Cornish crosses would be 25. We're thinking about doing, like we had like the pig harvesting class. We're not sure yet, but we thought about doing a chicken harvesting class, having a one day class, and having some modern steaders come up and teaching them how to harvest their own chicken and then cooking some of the chickens. So if we did that class, I'd want to do that one with Cornishes because Cornishes are easier to butcher. They're a bigger bird and they've got a bigger carcass, so they're just easier to clean out. Um, we do some hatching. Yes, that's right. We've got the incubated, so we're doing some hatching this year. We want to try the Red Rangers, I believe, for meat birds. We talked about that. We'll have to figure out, we have a little bit of a, what would that be called? Obstacle, no, I don't know. We have Figaro. <laughs> oh yes, we have Figaro. That'll be... I think he's going to be a big hunter. So. Yes, that'll be interesting to see what happens with Figaro, our kitten. We'll have to do something different with our chickens inside. Baby chicks. We'll have to make sure they're covered up and secure from him. Yes. Yeah, that will be interesting. Well, I'm going to say we're going to lose at least one chick to him this year. Don't say that on video. You know I'm going to say that, that. no. It's, I'm making that claim right now. It's going to happen. I'm ready for it. Oh. Well, if I don't, if I say it's not going to happen, then I'll be mad. So no. we're just going to put it out there and say it's going to happen. That's horrible. Yeah, but it's part of life. It's the cycle of life. That's what animals do. That's what Figaro does. He's a hunter. So he's gonna get at least, I don't want him to get one chick, but I know he's gonna at least get one chick. But we, we hoped for him to be indoor, outdoor, so he's not gonna, he's gonna learn. He does have to learn, but I'm just saying, it's out there. So yeah, we'll be hatching chicks, that'll be soon, probably April-ish, we'll start hatching chicks. I'm really looking forward to last year, I don't know if perfect, is the right word, but we had really good luck with starting our own seeds and growing our own plants inside last winter. Yes. We had some huge tomato plants that are at least that tall, probably that tall, with nice big thick stalks on them before we put them outside. Pepper plants, we did really good, so this year I want to perfect it even more with starting our plants in our basement, the outdoor kitchen. So we can start our growing season even earlier. So that'll be around the corner. And we want to, last year we got some plastic pots and we thought, oh, why don't we get the next size of that tool? Yep. What is that thing called? Soil block maker. So, so we, we're just going to do that. Yep. We use, size. we use soil block makers. And they, we have the small, medium size. And we bought, like see what Gina was saying, we bought plastic pots to transplant them into once they got too big for the medium one. And it was afterwards, we were like, why don't we just get the bigger soil block maker? So we're gonna have to order the bigger soil block maker and just transplant them to that. That worked. We had really good luck mm -hmm. with 
everything that we started And it's easier inside. on the plants too. Yep. To they because you're just basically moving it from the tray to there without having to. Right. You don't upset the roots. You can just plant them, and their roots aren't disturbed, so they take outside really good. So yeah, we're gonna start. We've been looking at seeds. This year, um, we'll be, we, me and Gina are going to finish going over our seeds and order them soon. But the big thing I've been focusing on here, if you've been watching any of our videos lately, we're in a very northern region. It's like the Antarctic this year, at least. Uh, <laughs> it feels that way. Yeah. But we have a short growing season. So the big thing I've been focusing on is we want heirloom seeds, but I want ones that have a quick germination and a quick fruiting to fruit time so that that way we're not waiting and waiting and then like oh we got our tomatoes in and oh the season's over we got our first frost no I want stuff that produces quickly and paying attention a lot to how long it takes from germination to start producing fruit we want the quickest ones we can get but still a good quality fruit or vegetable that they make so we're focusing on that a lot I'm excited for spring Feels like spring is going to be quite a ways off, but I know before we know it, spring will be here. And it's definitely one of those things you got to plan in advance for. Because if you don't, you're going to be running around looking. Oh, where can I get cucumber plants? Where can I get tomato plants? And then you're going to have to settle on whatever anybody else is growing. I know last year we did a lot of heirloom tomatoes, and we gave a lot of our plants away because we just had so many. We had that good of luck growing them that... The people that got them, they love the heirloom tomatoes. They just had so much more taste and flavor. So if you can grow your own, if you can buy heirloom quality plants, it's worth it. The flavor is so much better. Well, I think that helps you get through the cold winter, winters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just having something to look forward to and getting ready for when it gets too super busy that we're already That's true. that far. Because January, well, it's... Happy New Year to you guys. It's your New Year. We're two days behind, so it's your New Year. Happy New Year. So any time in January, we'll be starting our plants in the basement. Basically, middle of January to the end of January, once we get our seeds in, we're going to start not all of our plants. But we can start our tomato plants, our pepper plants, the stuff that take a long time to get growing. The quick-growing stuff like our cucumbers, zucchinis and summer squash. We'll wait for a while before we start those in the basement. But we can start all of the other plants pretty soon once we get the seeds in. So that'll be fun because it's going to be, it's cold right now, but it's going to be, I'm sure, cold January and February like normally. We'll have something to look forward to. We can be in the basement with our grow lights growing our produce for next year. So that'll be fun. Planning, figure out where we're going to plant, mm -hmm. figure out what we want to can. Yep. Gotta figure out. There's different recipes we want to use. Yep, we gotta figure out gardens. Like, where do we want to make a bigger garden? Where do we want to add on? Where we planted last year our squash garden. It did all right. A lot of it could have been the rain. But it's a really shady spot, which I knew that. And when I planted over there, I didn't think of it. That's where we should be planting the broccoli, the cauliflower, the cabbage, because they're cool weather crops. So that should be that'll be a really good spot the cool weather crops. So that's where I'm going to plant that stuff this year. We're going to have to find, which I think on the other side of our road over there, we were talking about planting like the pumpkins and the squashes that just run and it gets a lot of daylight over there. Yeah. So that's right now we've been talking a lot about springtime. Like what are we going to be planting? What do we want to grow? And I think that's our big focus. Like how much of our own produce can we put up? Because we've been here this will be our third growing season. The first growing season we were here, we were busy building our house, so we didn't have anything. I even told myself one to have chickens, but I said, no, we're too busy. We're not, we're gonna put everything off for the first year, which I'm glad we did, but it was hard at the same time. The second year, we didn't do any vegetables. Did we do any vegetables? So I'm confused. Is that second year? This is a third. That was a this last one we just had was our third season. This will be our fourth season. So we did do a little garden the year before. Where did we do it? That first we only had one raised garden oh, bed. Oh true, we had the one raised garden yeah. bed, so it was just a small garden bed. Mm -hmm. And then we added on to the garden bed last year. So it's been kinda a slow progression. So you gotta figure out what you want 
because you don't want to take on too much at once. We wanted to focus more on egg lays at first and then meat birds and pigs. That's where the second season we were here, that's what we did. We had a tiny little garden. Last year we had lawn for the garden. We thought we'd have more time for it, but we want in the middle of the season we changed our mind and we wanted to build more infrastructure. So this year, once now the infrastructure is in place, we'll spend more time on the gardens. I'm looking forward to that. It'll be nice to have a lot of our own produce. Now we can store it, and like this time of the year, we'll be able to eat it. That's gonna be good. I like to have the mess up size. So I like think it's gonna be awesome for the outdoor kitchen. Yeah. And like I like to be out in the warm, but you can also there will be shade. Mm -hmm. and we can open the windows, it up, close and, it up. Um, awesome we have a grill so we can grill outside yep. um, we really like for canning we really like making pickled beets yes. those are messy so that's definitely something good Very to be messy. doing in the outdoor kitchen but we wrote so we stain. stain we like pickled beets dilly beans those are our two big main things that we've always canned we want to do stuff more with the pressure cooker but because yep. it's so big It'd be easier to do that outside too. Do that so outside too. Our vegetables and stuff too. But we'd love to know, like we like dilly corn. Dilly corn's good. We've never made it, but we like green dilly beans and pickled beets. What some? What are some other recipes like that that you know of or that you really enjoy making every year? We'd love to try new things this coming season. Yep. But those are our two main go-tos. Pickles. Yep. We made bread and butter pickles. All, every year we usually do it. One year we put cauliflower in with the bread and butter pickles. That was delicious. We're going to do that again this year. But leave it in the comments down below. We'd love to hear what you pickle or what you can. That's like one of your favorite recipes or go-to recipes that you like to have on hand. Like I know like the pickled beets, it was always huge when we had them. It was like, oh, in the wintertime, I can't wait. And then you get low on it. It's like, oh man, I'm almost out. I know you want to do canning of meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, uh, I want to start canning of meat. Can and chicken. They say that's like the homesteaders' fast food. You can can chicken. It's already pre-cooked. It'll last for years in the can. You need a meal? Just get some chicken. Make a little bit of gravy. Put it over rice. It's your fast food. It's your McDonald's. So I want to learn. Stop doing that. I want to make our own hot dogs, our own air cured meats that'll last. So because the summertime it does get busy. Be nice to have everything so if you're in the middle of working you don't have the time to make a huge meal but you're starving you have everything on hand so you don't have an excuse to go run to town and get mcdonald's also um ideas for different kind of snacks and stuff to have around yeah too yeah what's your good go-to snack foods that's always a hard one i feel like we get kind of stuck in a but they always do the same stuff yep. so that would be nice and then you to get have. bored of it because I don't know, sometimes for that, you're, you're an out-of-the-box thinker, but I think for that, we kind of get... We get stuck. Yeah. Yeah, and snacks. Or just we don't take the time because we're usually... We're usually too busy focusing on doing work, and then we get hungry, or... We're doing projects, and then <coughs> work, we're working, and then... Mm-hmm. Family Definitely. time, and stuff, so... And you're going to make my desk. I'm going to make a desk. i got to fix the fan. We have lots of projects still to do. Right now it's hard because it's so cold out. It was 17 below zero this morning. That's been the hard part. I guess my big goal for 2018 is to be doing YouTube, our website, and all of our other content full time and not be doing my other job too. That's other than growing all of our stuff here at the homestead. That's my big goal and my big push is to be able to be doing this full time and able to have more time to focus on the projects and the content we put out right now put a lot of content out but i don't spend and focus a lot of time on research and tweaking stuff because i don't have the time to do that so i'm able to have more time to do that and give you guys better content so i think 20 i know 2018 is going to be a good year i'm looking forward to it 2017 was huge epic year for us we leaps and bounds in our homestead infrastructure and I'm happy with everything. Our failures, I don't think I'd call them failures, they were all learning lessons. As long as you can take something out of something that didn't go 100% the way you wanted it to or expected it to, you learned, you grew, 
you're going to move on. You're going to learn so much. I am a huge visual learner. I learn by trial and error. Built our house, and there's a lot of things I do differently, but that doesn't mean I fail building our house. We have a beautiful house here. But that's how you learn. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's one thing I take away is your failures aren't your failures. As long as you learned from them and you got up and you moved along, you succeeded and do better next time. That's what we can all do. I'm looking forward to 2018. You looking forward to 2018? Yeah. yeah perfect. Thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye.